So everything's good. All right, guys, listen. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to do this thing uh, for no other reason than have some fun at, at an expense of a silly little boy. But we're going to take him incredibly seriously, and we're going to try to, um, I don't know, um, address his gibberish as uh, charitably as possible. Uh, so let's do that. So I'll, I'll just give some backstory to people. He is yeah. uh, a, a very big name in the, the carnival, whatever it is, a cult or, I don't know, the carnival yeah, diet. Let's be charitable, Patrick, and call it a community. <laughs> carnival community. And uh, he, he was uh, right a few years ago, he was promoted by a lot of the carnival community. He was going on podcasts I feel, with, I think his first, pod, well, the first time he got, um, uh, he did an interview was with Dr. Bart K, who has got a little bit of an attitude. He, I don't know if you, <laughs> just you, you a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit of an attitude. And so it's been coming, I guess, there yeah, two years. And now we've got the, the well, I don't, I don't know how long he's been carnival, but I first heard about him maybe a couple of years ago. And, uh, I saw he did an inter, uh, a debate with the new Trevor. So. That's what I, I was going to say. I don't remember him being so big. Like, I remember him doing a debate with Nutrivore, and I was like, okay, it's just some kid who, like, does carnivore. I didn't know he was so, like, prominent in that community. I just thought he was some random dude who wanted to debate, but interesting. I didn't know. You debated so, him? It, it was no. the Nutrivore. Oh, yeah. Nick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And it, it didn't go too good for him, but he still, I think he still continued uh, uh, eating animals after the debate, but now we've he got the white. Does supposedly right unless uh, yeah. don't tell us don't spoil it if he became uh, plant-based uh, i want to find out uh, organically who knows yeah let's have a look all right enjoy the enjoy the show guys all right oh well uh, just before uh, he was uh, used to be called uh, carnival camaraderie wasn't he his channel yeah when, do you know when he changed the name do you know i don't know maybe about a year ago or less than a year ago i saw one time he popped up in my Twitter feed and he was promoting something a little bit, some sort of something pseudo-scientific and it was under the name Joey Schwartz. And then, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know the exact timestamp, but yeah, maybe less than a year. Could be interesting to find out because that usually correlates with stopping being a carnivore or whatever, you know, when people start taking away um, the, the name of their community out of their YouTube name. That's when we have to start worrying, don't we? <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, let's begin. So I want to make a video on why I quit the carnivore diet. And you all know that I'm not doing it anymore. And I've alluded to it in every video. I have made what I eat in the days, which clearly includes plants. But I haven't g given a full thorough breakdown on YouTube as to why I quit, exactly what my thought process was, how I was doing throughout that entire period and just general things like that, that I feel like have been glossed over and I should definitely hone in on, especially as carnivore gets more popular and um, as I just see it more and more on the internet. But, so let's go back, let's go back to where it all started, right? It all started back in my senior year of high school where I wasn't feeling too good, I was tired a lot, I was getting those afternoon crashes and I was like, okay, you know what, I need to find something different. And so I ended up finding carnivore, I did carnivore for like two years. And this is when I was, just a little neat peek. It's really funny to me. I ended up finding carnivore. They, they say carnivore as it's, it's supposed to like, you know, mean something to everybody. Not the carnivore diet, not the carnivore community, not the carnivore science. It's just carnivore. Like, uh, and also, that's it. Well, I was going to say also like he's, he's referring to a specific diet. That's like saying that you found Weight Watchers or so, you know, like it doesn't, it's just referring to like a certain diet intervention. It's not any type of there's no meaning beyond just like how you're eating. So yeah, that's really funny. That's interesting. I actually might disagree a little bit because the, they do end up um, like uh, attributing a lot of lore to uh, to this diet, like the whole ancestral natural bullshit. Yeah, that's true. You know I mean? yeah. yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent. But this this ex carnival has a this ex carnival has a very nice uh, setting. I'll just add. That is nice. He is. That is nice. I want to be where he is. Do we know where he's from? Because I want to vacation there. Maybe 17, 16 or 17? 17. And I was still growing, developing, getting stronger, bigger, taller. And 
what I thought was the carnivore diet enhancing every single aspect of my life is like, especially when in athletic performance, I was getting really good at soccer, but I was also playing every single day. So it kind of makes sense why I was getting that something. Regardless. But anyway, so these, he said that he, he was playing soccer every day and he was getting better. And a lot of people, particularly in the carnival community, it seems they have, a, they don't really understand how causality works. So, and it can go in either way. For example, someone could be getting an illness and then uh, a flare up, or for example, if someone has Crohn's disease, they could be getting a natural flare up. And then they, at the same time, bef just before their flare up, they eat a specific food and they don't sort of verify the causality, whether that's actually on cause. And then they attribute the whole flare up to whatever they ate. So it's just strange that, yeah. That's the problem with anecdotes and trusting your own uh, intuition slash feelings for mm -hmm. this kind of stuff, isn't it? Yeah, they don't control for any other factors. Like I always love, uh, since I've been doing more carnival reaction videos, I'll get comments from them saying like, there's nothing more reliable than your own experience. It's like we, people are so like psychologically, there's so many things that could be going on that it, it, there's a lot of other things more reliable than your individual experience. So just funny that that's what they value over anything else, which is crazy to me. I mean, even physically, would, yeah. you, you could have uh, two uh, independent things happen in your body. Uh, and uh, you can attribute uh, all the problems to one of them, but there is actually another thing going on. Yeah, 100%. And uh, yeah, they also don't know that you cannot really, for long term diseases such as heart disease, you, it's, you cannot feel, feel it, the progression of plaque in your arteries. Yeah, that's decades down the line. That's the thing is like, these people are like, well, I don't have any symptoms, everything's fine, but they're not 60, 70, 80, you know? I don't wanna die from a heart attack at any age, even if it's 70, you know? But you, yeah, you, back to what he was saying, usually if you do something every day, uh, regardless of what you're eating, you, you, you might tend to get better at it because, you know, practice. Makes perfect. Uh, Brandon, can you move uh, your mic just a tiny bit out of uh, further? Yeah, there you go, you clip it a little bit. Okay, so, is this better? Oh, I don't know. The audience will tell us, but uh, okay, the, the indication looks better. All right, cool. All right. I thought that the carnivore was this miracle drug. And if there's one thing I've learned, it's that the power of the mind. The carnivore again, it just kills me. I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a word nerd and it's just baffling to me. It shouldn't ever be doubted. You can convince yourself of anything, any diet. This is why some vegans can actually survive, right? Nobody survives on a vegan. I, I like to add that. First of all, the ve there's no, I don't know what people mean when they mean the vegan diet, because there's so many different infinite diets compatible with vegan ethics. And uh, yeah, back to the point about the carnivore, you said, I'll be, you don't see these carnivores, you know, acting like carnivores in any way. You don't see them biting out of carcasses. Yeah. Any diet, this is why some vegans can actually survive, right? Nobody survives on a vegan diet if they think it's bad for them. That would be the number one thing that would fuck them up. But I thought carnivore was the answer for everything. Yeah, go ahead, Brandon. No, I was gonna say, that, I mean, there is some truth to that, right? If you're doing, if you're like implementing intervention that you're convinced is bad for you. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you're going to have maybe a lot of uh, factors that are, or like, what is it called? Uh, uh, symptoms that you're experiencing that aren't really there, psycho... Psychosomatic. Yes, yeah, psychosomatic. I have them all the time. I'm really familiar with it. Exactly, right. So if you're like, and I feel like that's what starts to happen with these ex-vegans is, um, or ex-plant-based eaters is, they will feel good because they think that they should be feeling good. And then they'll start hearing about how you need cholesterol, how you need eggs and fish and all these things. And then they'll start having where, you know, um, psychosomatic symptoms are not always, some of them are just malnourished or because of a lack of calories. But I feel like sometimes um, you, could, you could see that for sure. And there's a thing called, I think it's nocebo, where you think you're doing, when you think you're doing something detrimental to your health, you then actually start feeling as if you know you've got some symptoms and to his point where it's difficult to survive on he said vegan diet but we can say you know diets compatible with vegan ethics there's hundreds of thousands more than 110,000 you know, uh, nutritionists dietetic dietitians in the ac academy of you know nutrition and dietetics they made the consensus statement that vegan uh, diets or diets compatible with vegan ethics can be uh, health healthy for all stages of life and may even prevent the on self certain diseases. So I'd like to know what sort of evidence he has for the claim that a vegan diet is difficult to sustain, but None. no evidence cited. None. That would be the number one thing that would fuck them up.
but I thought carnivore was the answer for everything. And so I attributed every single good thing in my life to carnivore and it got a little bit out of control when I started to realize that I actually wasn't as healthy as I thought. I wasn't as strong as I thought. And I was actually kind of suffering. I didn't talk about this publicly, but I got, I did some blood tests and like, there were definitely results in there that weren't very good. I mean, <laughs> I appreciate the that? honesty. Yeah. But have we seen those blood results? Because I bet even right now he can't admit that uh, having LDL 320 or something, some crazy shit like that is in any way detrimental, is it? I would say that if his LDL cholesterol or something related to um, uh, bad cardiometabolic health was elevated or, or he wouldn't, uh, the carnivores, they sort of deny high cholesterol, high apis. So it might be, you know, something to do with testosterone or something like this. If I had to put money on what was his biomarker, it might have been like I'll bet money on testosterone because that would that's what some that's something which would scare someone young I, uh, or someone who thinks their carnivore diet is the you know the key to optimal health. I agree. He's probably sorry. Uh, he probably cherry picked which uh, tests he did, didn't he? Well, he he probably because um, yeah, I think he's still probably an LDL denier. Right. Usually these carnivore people, they don't turn their back on that, but he probably did. He's probably talking about some other blood marker, right? Testosterone. I think I agree with Patrick. I think, uh, I think that's probably the one that scared him for sure. Yeah. That seems likely to me as well, frankly. Are we ready? I'm ready. And since then they've gotten insanely good, like insane, like top, top percentages, but it was fucked at one point. And I didn't talk about this and I probably, I don't know, maybe I'll go into it more. Like I'll show the actual data at some point, but for now, I'm just gonna, you guys are just gonna have to take my word for it because I'm not, I've been super transparent my whole time online. I'm not here to lie to anyone or just convince anyone that something is wrong that's right or something that's right that's wrong. I'm just trying to be honest and tell my, my, my own story. And so carnivore was, was fucking me up basically. Like in short, like that's the truth. It was really messing me up. And in retrospect, it kind of makes sense why. Um, my family was not a low carb family by any means. Like our ancestry is not low, like none of, nothing about me should be low carb uh, at all. Which ancestry, except, I don't know, the Inuit is low carb? And why does it matter? <laughs> Patrick, can you please? Yeah, I don't like to get into these games of what did, of who should I eat like, or... Dude, you know, it's so annoying. Before... It's so annoying. <laughs> like, imagine if Panda said, well, my ancestry is uh, eating flesh, then uh, I'm just going to die off because there is no flesh around me. So I'm just going to die off and not try to eat something else. Or I don't know, like, I don't know why it's convincing to people uh, this ant ancestry crap. Like in what way is uh, either taxonomic classification or ancestry um, uh, like uh, prescribes any kind of a diet? I, I don't get it. I mean, how many changes would you actually have in your composition between high carb and low carb if your ancestry is leaning that way or that way throughout the ages or whatever. I don't know. Well, they, they have this idea that our ancestors were in some form of optimal health, which you need to aspire to, but it's not actually <laughs> clear if our ancestors were in the, you know, the optimal health form that they could achieve. So why don't they just look at health outcome data in our current population, which they always ignore. They ignore the data looking at people in our settings yeah, I guess uh, the, the, there is um, a common saying that everybody is a little different. I think that's more convincing to people than, no, we're kind of the same. I mean, some people have like, you know, uh, some reactions to some foods, but basically our physiology is uh, kind of the same, isn't it, Patrick? I don't know. I don't know much about this. That's why I'm referring to you all the time. So we talked about this yesterday with Brandon. There's, there's, there's a common theme. There's some differences. Some people might have allergies or a, to a specific uh, yeah, component within the food, such as some people may have celiac disease, whereas in general, uh, gluten containing products are pretty healthy, health promoting. And so there's a general theme, more plants, uh, more fiber, not too much food, not too much calories and not overeating and uh, less saturated fat, more plant protein. And he also said, oh, I just want to share my story. Yeah. A common theme, uh, even among the ex-vegans uh, who released their videos, it's all about my story, my journey. They, they never talk about really the victims or, uh, yeah, it's always just about them. This is my, what I feel I see coming up as a general theme. I don't know if you two agree with that. 
Well, I wasn't even expecting that. I wasn't expecting him acknowledging anything about the victims of the matter because nobody ever does. It would be nice, though, for one time to get someone to say, you know, I'm an ex carnivore because I discovered that I'm logically inconsistent. Well, it sounds like he's still eating animal animals. Uh, I, de I definitely don't think he's plant based. He's definitely eating animals. Just probably just added some fruit or added some carbs in, like Paul Saladino. Um, but I, I was gonna say I love how a lot of all these videos are like, you know, maybe I'll show the blood tests or the data, but for now, just take my word for it. Why don't you just show it right away? Like, why don't you just make one video? show all the evidence and then be done with it. You know, they always like to be vague and not actually provide any, any um, evidence. Um, and then I was going to mention, I lost it. What, what, uh, he did the blood tests and what were you doing? Oh, isotopes. Yeah. So I always love how they always, they only go back hundreds of thousands of years for diet, but nothing else. They're fine with their insulated homes. They're happy with their antibiotics. They're happy with their modern medicine, cars, computers, everything they are happy to take advantage of. Um, that, uh, and most of the things we've invented, yeah, especially with medicine and, and healthcare, it's to prolong our life, right? That's yeah, why they got the, invented. Look at all those cushions behind him. So ancestral for fuck. Right, right. So that's the thing is they, they only apply this like, oh, what did our ancestors do? Ancestors do for, for diet. That's it. And it's just completely inconsistent. Like, why would you recognize, okay, we are able to invent new things, have more advantages now that we didn't have hundreds of thousands of years ago for everything else except diet. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Well, I to your point, yeah. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to add to your point about being vague. I don't really know what carnivore means because even the leaders or, of the carnivore movement, they, for example, Sean Baker, he admits that he likes cake on occasion. So I don't know what is their definition of uh, carnivore because they all seem to have some sort of plant still in their diet even the ones who seem to be the most aggressively promoting the movement. Yeah, and um, to your point as well, Brandon, like, um, why would they say, well, my body uh, was, uh, I don't know, conditioned, I guess, through ancestry to eat this certain way? We're even going to disregard that that's bullshit. But let's just say, okay, they are convinced that our ancestors ate only meat, and that's the best appropriate diet for our body that came from our ancestors and haven't changed the leak since then, I guess. But then they buy a sofa. Our ancestors uh, had their asses on grass or something. Guys, this is, this is too soft. You're making yourself into soy boys when you sit <laughs> on the sofa. Seriously. Right. Our bodies are preconditioned to, to have our faces in the mud. So that's what we should do for eternity. Yeah, bro. Well, I'm sure my ancestors uh, died of all kinds of infections. I'm, I'm sure I'm trying not to get there. All right, let's continue. Oops. Right, my grandparents, it's lots of bread, it's lots of potatoes, obviously organic, you know, like high quality stuff, fruits. And my family all has sweet tooth. It, like it didn't, it didn't make sense looking back for me to thrive on a low carb diet. But I was doing carnivore, not because of what my recent ancestors did, but because I thought that way, way, way back in time, you know, like homo sapiens, like also, after Australopithecus was eating fruit, grabbing from the trees, that okay, we were carnivores, right? Like we're, we've been carnivores for a million years. Why on earth would I eat plants that haven't been around until the agricultural revolution, which was just a tiny fraction of our- I don't know, because of health know. did? Yeah, I was gonna say, because peer reviewed uh, evidence shows we have great health outcomes when we eat plants. That's like a great reason to do it. I, I can't think of a better reason to eat plants. Yeah, and more to the point, uh, nothing like it was before. Nobody like it was when uh, our ancestors or whatever the fuck. Um, the cows are not the same, sweetie, darling, uh, Joey. I mean, the cows are, uh, I don't know, in some cases genetically modified, but like selectively bred and all that shit. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess he would say uh, that uh, his specific cows didn't receive antibiotics and all that stuff <laughs> or uh, B12 supplementation and they spent on grass. Um, I wonder if you have addresses how, uh, you know, in a pinch he would go to McDonald's probably. And he mentioned the words organic. All of these people, they also have an obsession towards organic. Organic really doesn't mean much as we, we talked about this in the stream yesterday. Organic still uses uh you know pesticides as well and uh, fertilizer and overall just look at the health outcome data even uh any sort of fruit and vegetables are health promoting and there's just an obsession with some sort of pure food and some pure diet which 
it's just creating lots of stress for people. I mean, altogether, it's a bit uh, obsessed. And um, I, I don't know, it just seems um, even like on a psychological level, a bit un unhealthy. Um, and I used to be a little bit like that, but not too much. Um, I think since going vegan, before vegan, my diet was absolutely horrendous and usually totaled into, into about 800 calories of food and then like six or 700 calories of beer. But, um, <laughs> but since going vegan, I was a little bit more conscious of it. Uh, and um, it's just, it just, you know, makes no sense. Like if you follow some kind of a moral stance, then yeah, you probably should uh, exclude a bunch of stuff from your diet. Um, but if you are looking for this perfect health, how would you even know you growing up, you growing old, you interact with the world? Um, how would you know even what a diet does to you until it's like in your 40s and 50s and shit? Yeah, there's so many factors. There's so many other variables. And I find and I, I kind of want to do a, either a stream of this or like some kind of video because I feel like a lot of these ex vegans or ex plant based eaters, uh, they, it, they either have disordered eating to begin with, or they, they're hypochondriacs where they always think that something's off. Oh, my digestion was a little weird today, so it must be the diet. Oh, I'm getting sick sometimes, so it must be the diet. Or so they always think something's off and are looking for perfection. Um, so I think that's really important to talk about because I think, especially like I was talking to Patrick yesterday about early veganism with like uh, Durian Ryder and Freely the Banana Girl and all of these people, they were like, either had really bad disordered eating or were like hypochondriacs looking for like healing, you know? And I think it, it's a really slippery kind of trap to fall into. Yeah. Patrick? No, I'll just add that there can be all sorts of disordered e uh, eating. I saw a recent paper where they, there was like five case studies and there was one of the case study was someone just eating an all meat, uh, uh, all meat diet. And then there was another case study. The last case study was someone who just had an obsession with only eating plants that were completely unprocessed. So it can go in all forms, but yeah. Obviously, veganism has got some dietary entailments, but you can have whatever you want with as long as you're not supporting the exploitation of uh, sentient beings. And uh, you can have, sometimes it might even be helpful to have a snack here and there, something you, which you want. It, it might even be beneficial for your health. You know what? I had a thought the other day. What we should do as uh, the vegan community is decide to find all the raw vegans and find all the carnivores and just stick them together on social media and just walk away. <laughs> just stop dealing with that shit. The carnivores are not our problem. The raw vegans are a little bit, they're ruining our fucking rep. But if they're fighting each other, maybe, you know, maybe all of them become omnivores again and leave us the fuck alone. I don't know. It's, uh, yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> no, I, I, think, I think awareness is, is number one. And yeah, I mean, and all of this is separate from the, the moral argument for veganism, like, or what veganism is, right? This is yeah. just comparing plant-based nutrition to like all meat nutrition. And I can't even believe there's a comparison. They have zero evidence um, when we're talking about carnivore diets. And uh, even all the people in the carnivore community, they say, oh, the studies are coming. Sean Baker and his debate, he said, they're coming. Or no, in one of his videos, he's like, don't worry guys, the research is coming. It's like, okay, but you're just gonna go with it? Like you're gonna go with it before you see the research? That's crazy, that's crazy to me. Listen, I everything that said uh, Sean Patrick, uh, what's his name? Sean uh, Baker. Baker says on social media um, is uh, for entertainment. Entertainment, so yeah. yeah. It, laugh at it and call him a clown and that's it. That's what I'm doing. God, I can't believe you said that. On, I can't believe you said that. That was just was insane. Insane. All right, yeah, let's crazy. continue otherwise. Yeah, sorry, Patrick. I was going to say he, he's raised thousands of dollars for a study and it's all seemed to just gone to some sort of platform called Revero online, some sort of health coaching platform. And yeah, it's, where is the study? Nobody knows. And he, and he admitted it's the literal that. Trust me, bro. It's the literal trust me, bro. And pay for it as well. Crazy. And uh, I think the, the little disclaimer in the debate with Garth Davis was, you know, I don't know. It's just to say, you know, if you, something happens to you, I'm not to blame. I think he's got some uh, guilty conscience there somewhere. Yeah. inside him telling Hopefully. him no i don't know about that frankly i think he's much more uh, social media literate than it seems sometimes i think he's uh 
quite a social media genius, actually. That's why it was so weird when the, he said that in the middle of a debate. I don't know. Well, let's continue. This is the sun earth. This is my thinking. It doesn't matter what my great grandmother ate. Yeah, she ate potatoes and meats and soups and lived till 104, but that that didn't make sense. You could live to 130 if you eat carnivore, like like you, people used to do in the olden days, right? Like way back before agricultural revolution. Time but, out, time out, time out. Who was living to 130 in the olden days? Is there a, like a documentation of anybody living to a, over 100 in the olden days? What are we talking about? I mean, 120 is like our genetic cap, isn't it? Nobody in uh, in the recorded history lived after 120. Well, it's because That's... they weren't doing the carnivore diet. That, ah, that's yeah, why yeah. they died early. They could have lived till 200 on the carnivore diet. Yeah, I don't know if there's some sort of genetic cap, but I'd like to see evidence for this as well. <laughs> Crazy, yeah. That. In the olden it... days. That's just a joke. I can't, dude. And just 130? That's only 10 uh, years above. He should have said uh, 200 or something. Oh, at, God, can you imagine? At least he's reflect. like, I think he's actually understanding how stupid this sounds. Like, it seems to me like, um, I'm hoping, we're only three, four minutes in, but I'm hoping he's reflecting on how, like, stupid this, 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 like, this train of thought is. So we'll see. All right. Now that I know what I know, that's a fairy tale. That whole story of... Wait, he knows what he knows. What is that? Are we going to find out? I hope. I hope. Damn. Evolving, becoming from monkeys, this and that and the other. That's a fairy tale that is not true at all. What's Wait a second. Wait Hold a on. second. Now I'm confused. Is he going to pull religion on it? I think he's going to go religious or something. It sounds, uh, it sounds uh, promising, yeah. To, uh, it sounds that we're going to hear some um, um, evolution denial, yeah? That's the... This is not... This oh, is, sorry. I think, I think, yeah, Postmortem will have a lot to say about this because she knows a lot about all of these different, you know, organizations. So, I know a little bit. Let's not say too much. Let's uh, <laughs> not, uh, you know, uh, build up expectation. All right. Whatsoever. None of that's true. We didn't evolve like that. That is an atheistic belief that is there to take people away from God and religion. From wow. Oh my God. This is going, I didn't watch this ahead of time. This is going in like a crazy direction. Yeah, Pig's Dream said the Methuselah lived up, up, up to 969, and that's why 130 is, uh, is a baby, isn't it? That's so funny. Yeah, I don't know. Um, now he's going, like, conspiratorial, too. Which, which yeah. this is, I think this is the biggest thing I, can, I want to drill home to, to people who watch these, like, different YouTubers. And it's not about the intervention. It's about the conspiracy and what the intervention gives them. So he's just going from one conspiracy, right? The carnivore, the government's lying to you about the food you eat to another one, which is, oh, the atheists are trying to get you away from God. Like he, they just go from one to another, to another, to another. Um, wow, I'm, I'm just speechless, I don't know. Do, do we know what, uh, what uh, percentage of conspiracy theorists gets disillusioned from it? Because I'm, now I'm worried about the kid. He's young. I don't think I don't, I don't think they do get dissolute. I mean, I'd have to guess very small. I saw a guy on Twitter. He he's got an, a an, a profile. I think which uh, provides a lot of information about how he sort of detached himself from all these conspiracy theories and how it sort of almost saved his life. So wow. Okay. So, okay. That's good. That's good. Because yeah. it's, it's dangerous. Yeah, these conspiracy theories they harm people. Yeah. Holy shit. To take, take people away from any sort of divine force. If you divine force? I've never heard that uh, sentence before. Again, I apologize. I'm a word nerd. What it's the kind fuck of like, is divine force? It's kind of like in Star Wars. If you know how they had the force, but I guess this is from God. I don't know yeah. if I had to guess. Yeah, I'll guess some sort of believe... higher power. Yeah, some sort of higher power. Yeah, but I never, it almost sounds uh, like um, uh, separate from God. Isn't it? When you say the divine force, you like, it's like, I don't know, it's a, it feels like uh, something extra there, you know, uh, a little bit of uh, extra sauce on that uh, <laughs> evolution denial and uh, creationism. That we came from monkeys, you need to seriously reevaluate your own perspective and understanding of life in the world, because that is a terrible way to think, and it's so wrong. Why? 
why are we going to go into this? I, I, I just can't wait to hear what he has to say. I don't know what he could possibly say, so I'm excited. So let's just continue. So now that I understand what I know, you know, if I could go back in time, I would have never done carnivore. I would have never been carnivore because I know that that's not how humans developed. We weren't eating raw meat. Wait, so we did develop. You just can't use the word evolution, right? He can't say that we evolved. I, I think he's going to pull... I think he's going to pull an Adam and Eve. I think he's going to talk about maybe how Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden, there were plants or something. I don't know. I don't know if he's going to go Christian here, but if I had to guess, that's where else could he go? I don't know. I don't know what direction well, he could go. The Christian part is a roller coaster, right? Within seven uh, episodes, I call them uh, in Genesis, uh, they go from being uh, like plant based uh, to uh, meat eaters, right? Mm hmm. And that takes only uh, seven uh, pages or, some, or so. <laughs> so I don't know which, I mean, I think uh, when you read the Bible, you must cherry pick. Otherwise. Oh yeah, you have to. Yeah. And yeah, notice how he didn't really provide a rebuttal to the sort of the denialism of evolution. He didn't really explain why he thinks that, where his belief, uh, sort of his arguments and beliefs came from. He just says now yeah. that he knows what he knows. He's being super vague. Yeah, and the classic thing, well, if you think that way, then there's something wrong with your... <laughs> oh, it's so <laughs> manipulative. It's so, like, it's such a sneaky thing that they do. Yeah, all of the, a lot of the carnivore people do that. They say, in fact, in my comments, they're like, they're like, the fact that you think this just proves how dumb you are. It's like, okay, do you have something to refute my claims? Like, do you have anything? Or are you just going to call me stupid? Yeah, give me something. Give me something to grab onto, right? Give mm -hmm. me like a search word to Google. Yeah, give me some like constructive criticism. Don't just just be vague about it. Yeah. And then we started cooking our meat because because we got smarter and our brains got bigger. And that's all that's all bullshit. That's not a real story. And humans are the chosen ones. We are not like any other animal on Earth. We are not insignificant. We are the, the Earth is for humans. We are everything. Excuse me? <laughs> So uh, uh, no expectation from uh, this point that he is actually uh, have considered animals in an ethical way in any kind of shape or form, uh, because uh, he, says, uh, he juxtaposes humans are not as insignificant as the animals. We are everything. This is everything this is, is for more, us. This is more disappointing. I'd rather him just continue to deny nutrition and like this is and more disappointing than than what he started out with. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, uh, I think you hit it on the head there, Brendan. He goes through from one conspiracy kind of um, thinking to another conspiracy thinking uh, very smoothly. <laughs> There's no pause there to, uh, to uh, yeah. Right. Perhaps now his total death count is a little bit lower if he's eating a little bit more plants. Maybe. Yeah, but my guess is as much as is Brendan's that it's just the tiniest of bits. I think he's still very meat heavy. I'm going to go back a little bit. Significant. We are, the, the earth is for humans. We are everything. We are, we are life and everything is just there for us. Everything. Is we are life. Okay. okay. What does that sentence actually fucking means, right? We are life. There's just no uh, evidence for any of this. There's no evidence. It's not like the world is like a candy shop for us. Like, what do we, what do we, where's the evidence for that? That everything's just here for us to take and abuse and use however we want. That's. I mean, forget evidence. I would, uh, I would uh, be appreciative for a sentence that actually makes uh, any kind of anything, like makes any kind of sense. Well, we are life. Yeah. When you zoom into it, this is what qu qu Quackery leads to. When you zoom in and just focus, what, what is that? What is that saying? I don't know. We are life. Yeah. We are life. What I'm, I'm trying to be charitable. I haven't been so far, but I'm trying to be charitable and think, what does he mean by that? We are life. Does he mean that, that we are the creation that continues creating or something? Like does it, we generate life or something like that? Or I, I we are alive. That... that would make no sense if he just says we are alive. That's everything which is, is alive is alive. Like a plant is alive. So I don't know. I think he's just trying to say in a very dramatic kind of theistic way that, that we are just the best. Like, like humans are the only species, only individuals that matter, which again, he's, in, he's, again, he's going, he's implying, he hasn't gotten into his religion or what he believes, but he's implying some type of purpose, some kind of like, um, some kind of in, like, uh, what's, what's it called? Interference with like God and like, like, like you said, divine force. So we'll yeah. see.
I think he read Genesis and then stopped reading. <laughs> that's that's the feeling that I'm getting right now. He read Genesis and he's kind of paraphrasing a few words from there. Yeah, so it's interpretation. Yeah, maybe he's uh, like the type of religion, maybe he studies with like a religion. This is all speculation, but um, it just reminds me of something. Uh, maybe he studies with like a religious leader who feeds him this like uh, little snippets of uh, words uh, th that you can say to become a Christian. <laughs> Um, guys, before we, um, your, could, can you guys give me like two seconds? Sure. Cool, I'll be right back. No right. stopping the stream though. Yeah, yeah. No, no stopping the, the stream. stream. Don't you Continues. dare stop the stream. I'll be right back. Uh, off air, I scolded the guys for stopping the stream uh, last night. I told them we're not stopping the stream for bloody anything or anybody. Yeah. <laughs> guys, while you are here, uh, did you know that Patrick is streaming this exact stream on his channel as well? Um, maybe you should uh, go there and uh, show his stream and some appreciation. Uh, Would definitely okay. help me out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, mute the stream and let it play, uh, and you can, uh, uh, you know, like, subscribe, do all kinds of YouTube stuff while you're there. Uh, also, I don't know uh, if you know, but Patrick uh, is uh, my uh, co-host uh, on the um, uh, cult uh live streams well i say called live streams but uh it's the bite model review of veganism and meat eating that's gonna happen on tuesday let me get that link as well while uh, patrick is uh promoting his instagram or something do something patrick so P pig's dream thanks for joining the 40 year old vegan thanks also for joining yeah, i've got a few there more extra go. people uh, that's a that's a bit of a, a buzz thanks a lot please interact if you've got any extra points i want to see what you guys think about this ex carnival reaction because he's uh yeah he's a big name in the carnival movement so we we need to get to the bottom of this and you know i also didn't know that he was a big name i mean he's a very smooth talker uh, from uh, very little that i actually saw of him he talks really fast with a lot of confidence i i'm always suspicious of those people but in this case especially since i've at least heard that shit so many times um, he was on all yeah. the on all the big podcasts and uh well, yeah for he's the incredibly guy. young and very buff isn't it and so uh, yeah back to what you're saying for the people who want to follow on instagram yesterday me and logical consistency we did a stream to andrew tate over there and yeah we released the reel today it got pretty good engagement right. last time i checked yeah. it got more than 10k views well, he made a, yeah, just on one of his clips where Andrew Tate is saying, you know, suffering, everything suffers. So why do we care about animals? And, yeah, uh, pop the link in the chat. And if you send it to me, I'll pop the link as well in my chat. Yeah, I'll definitely do that now. All right. Are we ready to continue? I'm ready. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Here for us. We are, like, and, but when you're carnivore and you're following this whole belief system, you think everything is random. You think it's just like, okay, this is how things turned out. We were fish, and then we became monkeys, and then we became whatever the next thing is, and humans and apes, and sh like, that's the thinking. Hold on, is he tying carnivory, like uh, the carnivore diet, to the evolution? Yeah, he somehow, I think he's trying to say that carnivores are, like, you're, you believe, like, you follow the carnivore diet if you're atheist, if you're an atheist, or if you believe in evolution. Which is interesting because I feel like a lot of, I don't, I don't know how many, but I feel like a lot of people who do follow carnivore are also religious or also usually Christian from what I've seen in the comments. Well, m most Christians are, uh, accept evolution though. Interesting. So I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It's a very small sect of uh, Christianity that uh, is a, yeah, what, a, what we call a young earth. Well, there are a few shades. Some accept uh, that the world is uh, uh, young and uh, we haven't evolved. Everything was just created as is by God. Uh, some people accept um, evolution. Uh, no, they accept uh, that the world is old, but they deny evolution. Um, and, but, but most Christian, the majority these days, um, especially Catholics, they accept evolution. They accept the um, old earth uh, timeline. Um, yeah, loads of uh, Christian scientists in the evolution field. So, But wouldn't uh, Adam and Eve like directly go against the theory of evolution? Yeah, but the, most Christians say that it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor, it's, uh, okay. I didn't know that, okay. <laughs> yeah. Now the Christians I'm around. So my, my fiance, she's from the South, she's from Florida. And I, I promise you, 
uh, those those Christians do not believe in evolution. Well, that will do it. The South of America, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, that's the impression I've got, at least, that most Christians, um, yeah, uh, look at the Bible as uh, something to um, um, to have uh, like, a, like a parable of, uh, to read it through the lens of um, having learned lessons from it and not directly, well, this happened, the Garden of Eden actually existed and all that stuff, as far as I know. Um, yeah. But what's more interesting that it, it just because the I think because the carnivore dieters claim uh, that um, our ancestors ate a certain way, oh, he then extrapolates. He then extrapolates that uh, anything to do with ancestry, ancestral claims, is uh, tied to evolution. That's which what is, he's I doing. Guess, That's exactly what yeah. he's doing. Yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, yeah, I guess I understand where he's coming from. Yeah, I guess it wouldn't make sense to become a carnivore if you believe in young Earth, because most of the in, in uh, un ancestry talk is about millions of years. Mm -hmm. So if you <laughs> if you don't believe in evolution and don't believe in old Earth, it's all up in the air. Good. Yeah. yeah well, well thought out. I was more term. What? Sorry. I said yeah. Pretend. Well, well thought out. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly because sure. sure. I think what to him, he's gotten this awakening that wait a second, I'm carnivore, because millions of years ago, homo sapiens ate meat, but I don't believe in millions of years ago, or, or whatever he discovered, whatever he knows now, led him to to not believe in millions of years ago. So he can't be carnivore. So like he debunked carnivore with the like a theistic worldview. I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> so you think it's everything is just Let's just go back in time and use the history books. But that's not how we can actually do things. That doesn't work. That's not true at all. That's that's complete denial of the truth. Wait, what history book is talking about ancestry or uh, like further than since uh, the beginning of uh, of the first century? Like, <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> I mean, I think he's incredibly mixed up with his sciences, right? Because. Um, uh, as far as I know, right, I'm a dumbass, but as far as I know, history books aren't talking about back to millions of years or whatever. Because there was no, there was no documentation back then. Um, yeah. You can't really talk too much about what we don't know that much of. But yeah, I think he's just going on like a man. He, something's up with him. Like, this is not like healthy. This is something's weird. I don't know. Yeah. Truth and, and uh, the actual existence of God. So I understand this now but I didn't understand this then. And at this time, I was really starting to, to struggle on carnivore. I really want to know whom he's talking to. I really, really want to know who's been in his uh, ear teaching him this because he's kind of reciting a thing, right? The way he talks about it, the way he paraphrases things into this almost childlike language of uh, uh, the earth is here for us, we are alive. This sounds like something that somebody told him and he's kind of paraphrasing it the way he understood it. You know what I mean? Probably was Maybe I'm YouTubers. reading too much into it. Yeah, probably was, he probably found YouTube videos of like conspiracy about like evolution doesn't exist. And he probably just, he probably went down a YouTube hole or something. Yeah, could be, could be. Okay. And so I added back in carbs. Now, there was a lot of, I've been doing research on carnivore for years, guys. If you think about this, I mean, I was making six, seven K a month on my channel. Like it was my main source of income. I was trying to leave UCLA. Wow. Of course six, I wanted to be seven K. I would Oof, That's nice. That's six, a nice seven K. Wow. Look, if I didn't have, if I had like no morals, I would go carnivore for seven K a month. Are you kidding me? If I had no do moral, that well. moral, uh, morals at all, I would. I would. Such uh, an easy way. For reference, Brandon, uh, how much is that? Uh, like, uh, if you juxtapose it with maybe like a minimum wage or something in America. Um, let me put it this way: so I work full time, I make ten dollars an hour more than minimum wage, right? So I make I make decent money, um, what I would say, and I don't. That's like, that's like a lot of money. 7K a month is a lot of money. That's, that's like, that's like double what I make. Not to get crazy, but that's like a lot of money. So oh, wow. I don't know if he's exaggerating because, you know, on social media, people will exaggerate. Maybe he was making five and a half or something. He like bumped it up, but 7K a month is a lot. I mean, we can go to, uh, well, I guess it wouldn't be uh, very representative, would it? If we go to Social Blade. 
Well, he doesn't have that many subs. He doesn't have that many subscribers. So 7K a month is a lot for just 18,000. Or is that how much people make for 18,000 subs? Mm. Oh, I think he, he was selling, you know, carnivore diets or plans and stuff oh, such as this. Oh, okay, okay. So maybe if he means total with, his, with all of the streams of revenue. Yeah, that would make sense. Maybe people also joined yeah. his channel and stuff. Maybe, like, I, I've noticed that in the, in the carnivore space uh, sometimes, uh, like, um, they, when they talk about uh, the... Uh, it doesn't matter. No, it's, that's speculation. I'm going to regret saying that's, it. So that's, yeah, an that's easy it. way to make money, uh, unfortunately, through innocent animals. Uh, just to tell people what they want to hear. They love it. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, how much would that be popular, though? How big is uh, the carnivore uh, dieting community have grown? Way bigger. I mean, way bigger than you would ever imagine. Like, I had no idea until I started reacting to carnivore videos and they just, just, they just blew my channel. Like they, with comments and with, oh man, like way bigger than I thought. I thought it was like a small little niche thing of like people just, it's huge. It's like really upsetting actually. Oh fuck. And there are probably not that many carnivore influencers uh, yet, right? Cause I'm thinking like of the vegan community. There's just so many uh, vegan channels and shit that it's almost like impossible to grow your channel these days. Uh, because, and you know, um, uh, nobody in the vegan community is making money because uh, we have uh, ethics and we <laughs> don't overcharge for, for shit and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, if he's making 7K a month with, uh, by all accounts, a tiny channel, right? And, you know, uh, like most YouTubers would call 18K uh, nothing. It's, it's small. But yet, wow. And, and it's interesting to see because like Earthling Ed, I think he's getting close to like 500K subscribers, right? But it's hard yeah. to know how many of those people are vegans, right? Probably most of them, like just statistically, probably aren't, right? Or, or maybe every vegan on the planet, you know, a lot of almost every vegan on the planet is subscribing to him. But, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of people who follow Earthling Ed probably just find his content interesting or like the conversation, even if they're non-vegan. But I would probably argue, just spe speculation again, that um, people who follow Sean Baker or people who follow these guys, they are carnivore or they are like leaning that way um, pretty yeah. heavily. So, yeah, it's really, it's really... I really would also claim that uh, being on a carnivore diet takes uh, some mad cash. So uh, it's uh, potentially a uh, rich community to try to uh, scam. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Whereas uh, vegans are all uh, poor and shit. <laughs> Isn't yeah. that funny? Yeah. That's so, like, I feel like almost every vegan I see on, on, on the internet, they're all pretty, pretty, you know, middle, middle class, low, you know, pod poor. Um, you see a lot of like plant based culture in like maybe richer societies but vegans like ethical vegans they're all pretty pretty like average income patrick seems like he wants to say something no i'll just say yeah i know there's the plant-based wellness sphere but you, you don't really know w which of them are vegan and some of them for example they might eat fish once per month so it's kind of tough to know whether they're ethically orientated but i i don't know i haven't got any statistics on this but yeah all right. It was my main source of income. I was trying to leave UCLA. Of course, I wanted it to be real. Of course, I wouldn't have left Carnivore if I didn't think that I needed to. But I did need to. And but I was researching a shit ton in that whole time. Like it was all that I focused on. It was all that I was doing. Watching videos, watching the Carnivore channels, reading books, reading research papers. And I accumulated a, a lot of knowledge in defense of the idea that Carnivore is the best diet for humans. I got a lot of knowledge. I can't believe he, the, the way he uses words, it's just great, drives me insane. He's saying he accumulated a lot of knowledge, meaning uh, something that he rejects now, right? So it's not knowledge then, is it? It's just all <laughs> bullshit. Why are you calling it knowledge then? I can't. All right. Knowledge. And some of those things include the ideas that all animals are in ketosis, they all produce ketones. Um, things like there are very, other, there are groups who thrive on only animal products and it's just a lot more stuff like carbohydrates being poisonous plants having anti-nutrients um just a lot of stuff that i can that i can recite like it's nothing because i studied it so hard i studied it more than anything else in my entire life and is this guy eight years old is this guy eight years this is like if you gave an eight-year-old a camera and he's talking about what he learned at school like this is he's not he keeps saying he could recite these things everything he just recited is not true and is not supported by peer-reviewed science so he's accumulating a lot of information, 
but definitely not knowledge. Yeah, I agree with you, postmortem. Definitely not knowledge. And I'd like to know what knowledge made him sort of debunk his past carnival position. What was he reading? You know, peer-reviewed meta-analyses, or was he just going down no, the God. YouTube rabbit rabbit? Oh, case yeah, we know God. God did it. He was reading case reports about uh, <laughs> some dude who ate uh, ten pounds of soy for three years or something. <laughs> and now I understand that there's a huge, very strong and true rebuttal to all these points because carnivore is not an inherently bad diet. But it's a bad diet for certain people. And certain Sorry, are there rebuttals or is it not an inherently bad diet, right? When you have a diet that is basically based on what you now recognize as full bullshit, uh, I mean, what evidence, evidence do you now have for this diet to be anything like inherently good, inherently bad, inherently neutral? How can you say any of those words in the same sentence? Patrick. Uh, I don't know. I just add that he talks about animals not being in ketosis. I'll add that Dr. Matthew Nagra's got a recent reel on, on this topic. People can check his account on, on you know, the fact that Inuits they had a protective adaptation to not go into ketosis. But uh, regardless, it's just important to look at health outcomes. There's, there's some people who apparently can do quite good on a more healthy vegan diet. There's uh, vegan, not be, sorry, keto diet for about, there's cohort studies which look for about 10, 15 years I've seen and there's the more healthful keto diet is more in the direction of a plant-based keto diet. So instead of uh, more saturated fats, switching saturated fat from animal foods to uh, polyunsaturated fats and vegetable oils. So it could be, uh, you know, possible to sustain the keto diet long-term. I haven't seen too much evidence long-term on the keto diet, but I would say if someone wants to do a keto diet, it'd be best to go for a more vegan, uh, plant-based, plant-exclusive. That'll be the more healthful one. Dude, it's I want to meet the v a vegan keto guy or girl. That's like, that's hardcore. That's like, I want to meet that person, you know? No I mean, low a, carb. Yeah, there is a dude on, uh, on uh, Twitter that uh, is doing this as an experiment right now. His name is Daniel. Mm, interesting. Okay, I'll try and check out. I don't have Twitter, but I'll try and look it up anyway. Yeah, yeah, we were thinking uh, of doing I, a reaction yeah. at some point. Yeah, yeah. All right. And uh, there's also a famous cardio. There's also a famous vegan cardiologist. She's called Doctor. She's ethically vegan. Doctor Danielle Bellardo. Oh, Bellardo, yeah. She, yeah, Bellardo. Yeah, and she was doing a vegan keto diet at some point. So maybe she's still on it. And uh, yeah, she was. She recently debated Doctor Gundry. He's a. Uh, he's another sort of you know guy in the quack sphere. Yeah. And he, he, yeah, he was making some outrageous claims. She was, you know, pointing towards peer peer reviewed literature. Dr. Gundry was talking about anecdotes, like my, if everyone follows my diet, disease would be completely eliminated. You know, including that was the one with uh, Dr. Mike, right? Or, or, yeah. Yeah, 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 that was a good one. I like that one. I saw just a tiny bit of it, uh, but uh, I haven't. I, I just don't, I never developed the taste for this long format uh, quack beatings. Oh my God. That's all I could. I, if I had one thing, if I had to pick one thing that I could listen to for the rest of my life, it would be that it would be four hour long debates between really knowledgeable nutritional scientists that are vegan and everyone else that I could listen to that all day. It's like so much fun. Dr. I Mike's got no vegan. Yeah, yeah, he does. Has to. Um, I just have a very low tolerance to cringe and that shit is cringe to me. <laughs> I'm just, I can't, but, uh, yeah. Inherently bad diet but it's a bad diet for certain people in certain situations. For example, if you are a developing child in the heart of Los Angeles with Eastern European ancestry, you should not be a carnivore, point blank. You should not, no, no chance, because your ancestry is acclimated to consuming grains, to consuming starches and organic local fruits, as well as meat, high quality raw dairy, with that, which has tons of carbs. There's so That's my personal pet peeve. Guys, raw dairy is the stupidest fucking shit you can put in your stupid mouth, mm -hmm. for real. Like where did this myth come from that yeah. shit kills people that shit kills infants specifically jesus christ i did a reaction to uh to uh, paul saladino his reel about how like his hack to get raw dairy is just eating pet food but in that video he he grabs a cow's udder and he like pours the milk in his mouth and i was like it's like whoever sees that and is like yeah i'm like get away from me man that's too much that is that's just not it's so, like, I get when you're disconnected and you buy the milk from the store and it's like, oh, it's this milk. But when you are like totally fine with grabbing the udder of a milk and like squeezing it into your mouth, that's too much for me. Uh -uh, there's something wrong with you. And there's also this idea that if you drink raw dairy, you can cure lactose intolerance. And this, there's, there's studies which look into this and 
as Postmortem said, it's, uh, it's uh, a hazard, raw dairy. It's uh, yeah, a risk for foodborne illnesses. And plus, it does, yeah, ethical, you should, ethically, you shouldn't be drinking it. And also, I'm confused because it seems like Joey's like backtracking now. So he just went through this whole rant where he said, no, ancestry doesn't matter. Doesn't, you know, it, it, that's an atheist uh, conspiracy, whatever he said. And then now he's saying, you shouldn't be carnivore if your ancestors are Eastern European and because you ate a lot of grains like i feel like he's just all over the place well uh, to be fair he said in the beginning that he was thinking about the ancestry of uh, thousands or tens of thousands of years ago when, when he should have been looking at the ancestors of his like, oh is that what he said okay grandmother. i see yeah, okay yeah. so he said okay forget about millions of years ago i'm just gonna look to my great-grandmother okay okay yeah okay well, if if he is a young earth creationist, then he's definitely could uh, look at uh, the Noah's time, uh, the guy with the boat uh, who was first granted to eat meat. Or, you know, he could look at the Garden of Eden, where they were supposed to be uh, supposedly uh, totally plant based. Uh, which, why is he choosing uh, which one? Why? I mean, supposedly, right, if he goes by the creation myth, uh, he's. Um, body is built his god created his body to digest only plants right and whatever happened afterwards that's um i don't know some kind of uh, god got confused to something and <laughs> granted to them eating meat or whatever but he built the body to be plant-based i don't know only carbs and raw milk right this is also stuff that should be consumed by somebody in that situation whereas somebody in siberia it's a different story if you're in siberia then you only have meat in certain months. I mean, the Siberian people are of Eastern ancestry as well. There was a little bit of a historical for food. There is lots of uh, um, people with uh, like uh, Russian ancestry in Siberia, aren't there? Am I mixing up? I could be. I'm a dumbass. Somebody. You boys are very quiet. Am I mixing I'm, it I'm up? I'm waiting for Pat. I don't know. I thought I, I wanted to give Pat. Uh, I don't know. I don't. You, you go, Brandon. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, that makes sense. That would make sense to me if there was Russian uh, and Eastern European like migration or answer, or like connection to Siberia. I just don't know what this has to do with anything. Like, I mean, I yeah. Stalin was sending his prisoners there. So. Oh, that's a, that's a good point. Siberia. Yeah. I think he means something else. I think he means like uh, not Siberia, but something else. Maybe like the North Pole or something, or I don't know. Potentially, yeah. But yeah, I think what he's trying to say, from how I understood, is that you should eat based on you know what your environment is, eating local foods a few uh, a few generations back. That's the general impression. And uh, there's, there's, there could be foods, new novel foods, which are health promoting, such as a multivitamin. They didn't exist and. In the literature, someone needs to point out to him to have a read about the nutritional literature and just read what's happening in our current populations. Yeah, I would yeah, just need then... evidence. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, go ahead. I was going to say, I would just need evidence to support that, like, people in Siberia can't do well on grains or shouldn't be eating grains, whole, you know, fruits, vegetables. I just don't, that just wouldn't make sense to me, and that's not um, consistent with the evidence. Well, this, you see, Brandon, they uh, might not have uh, uh, have um, uh, those foods uh, uh, for several generations that didn't have them. That's why they can't digest them. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> right. 